Went over to my father and went, Dad, I've decided what I want to do. Drive me to the coast. I'm going to be a pro surfer. You know, Hawaii always was that ultimate proving ground. It was a melting pot from the best surfers in the world coming together to prove themselves. He hated me because that's what we were destined to do. There was a bunch of these so-called pro surfing contests with small amounts of money and we started chasing around because what else were we going to do? Hawaii, it was a two-fold mission. It was one, I wanted to rip it, and two, I wanted to get famous. You had this irrational group of kids and they came over here from Australia and they came over here from South Africa. It was obvious very early in the game that these new guys were coming along and they could surf better than anyone else in the world. We just wanted to be the best. We wanted to be the most radical. We wanted to do the new maneuvers. They were the next guys that were going to move the sport to the next level. We were prepared to die here and be surf, but that's what it took. The whole little group of Aussies came over here and it was like, just tear apart anything, catch anything. <laughs> just whatever it's moving, just rip it to shreds, you know? This new group came along and said, you want to make surfing into a sport. And everyone turned around and just went, they want to do what? Well, they'd write articles about how we're here, you know, we're the kings of the sport. This brash attitude of screw the establishment, we're going to go for it, whatever it takes, get what we want. It rubbed people the wrong way in Hawaii, without a doubt. This whole thing of trying to break in and establish a sport, it took a very, very strong attitude. I did not see pro surfing coming until I stood on the beach with Rabbit Bartholomew. It was our chance to change the perception of what the world for surfing was. They did it for nothing, you know, they did it just for the, out of the love of surfing. They were rerouting the railroad of uh, surfing history. It's timeless stuff, you know, it's stuff that will probably never be repeated. They were the pioneers that laid the foundation for everything we were dreaming about. It was those guys who made pro surfing happen that everyone in surfing should recognize that, I think. I said, mate. I'm going to be a pro surfer. I'm taking this dream and I'm going for it. Sean, you're like the uh, the surfer's version of Jesus, it sounds like. <laughs> you know, moving forward through life with these positive philosophies that improve the lives of the world and the people around them, and in turn spreads a little bit more positivity. It's all very impressive because, you know, most people don't take that moment to strive to fix and repair and build up those that they come in contact with. I want to ask you a couple of questions. I want to change gears. You've had nothing short of a legendary life. You've been involved in, you've been at sort of several bullet points in the historical timeline that have made surfing culture what it actually is. <laughs> we're going to we're gonna go back and we're going to bounce around to some of the charity work you're doing now and some of the events you got coming up. But before we get to that, I was watching Breaking Down the Door, Busting Down the Door, excuse me. And I'd seen it before, but I reviewed it today because I knew we were going to talk. And I, I'm looking at you receive this trophy for being a champion that was, I, if I remember right, the trophy that you should have got years ago when they couldn't afford a trophy, but they pulled the trophy out of the case and they for you for the photo op and put it back in the case. Exactly. <laughs> but you got this, you and some of these like uh, adventurers all got the trophy years later that was much deserved. And there was a moment where you're on stage and it looks and it feels pretty genuine. But walk me through that evening. You show up at this gala. Here you are. Do you know what you know what you're there for? But when you get to the party, like what hits you? Like what hits Sean Thompson? Yeah, it, it, it was an amazing night because they honored the, 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 the crew, the early crew. Uh, there was a... Um, uh, uh, four or five of us guys. There was um, um, myself, uh, Rabbit Bartholomew, uh, Peter Townend, uh, Mark Richards, and uh, we helped create. We helped create pro surfing and build it. But we didn't build it because we had a, a grand plan. We just built it because we loved it and we were so stoked and and passionate and could see that there there was this opportunity to perhaps make a living from going surfing. And and we were incredibly proud of surfing. You know, we thought we were as good as or better than the basketball players, the baseball players, the golfers, the Grand Prix racers. You know, we thought that we were right there. Our sport was life and death. 
uh, also we had like the cool culture aspect to it um the spirituality and 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 we were very proud and and we made it happen it's like we conjured it up like like when i think now it was almost like we were magicians and, and we conjured it up so that night was was special and we were surrounded by all the the the, the top pros from from the modern era and they were they were very respectful and it was wonderful to be to be recognized because surfing's really only had a, a short history from a, a a competitive perspective i mean surfing is been around for for hundreds and hundreds of years it's one of the oldest sports you know it was 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 a uh, integral part of polynesian culture um you know back in the in the 15th and 16th century so it, it, it's an old sport but the professional aspect's only very new you know i surfed in my first pro contest in in 1969 the world tour only started in 1976 so it, it's pretty new it's kind of new history but it was great to be recognized you know, do the you know look this generation of pro surfers? They have it a little slightly better than your generation did. Uh. You know, in, in, in terms of the rewards and the benefits. And I wonder, do they still look back at your stone cutting lineage as a pioneer and recognize what your contributions actually were, or do they just feel like this is the system we've grown up in? This is what we've got. This is the way it is. Or do they look at you and be like? Without this guy, we're not standing here. No, I think that I think they're very they're very respectful. Um, you know, Kelly Slater is the greatest surfer of all time. I, he won the the world title eleven times, and he's incredibly respectful um, of 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 our contribution. And as our, um, I was last week on Tuesday, they had the World Surfing Championships down at Trestles. It's the first time they've ever had it on on one particular day. Generally, it's a circuit. But during COVID, they changed it. So it was on one day, they had five surfers, five guys, five girls. Um, and I went up to congratulate, um, you know, the winners afterwards. And they were so respectful and so thankful that, you know, I'd come down to watch. And, 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 and they're just very, very appreciative. I mean, a few years ago, I went surfing out there and it was very crowded and packed. And, you know, all the hot guys were in the water. And I remember them paddling up to me and say, you can take any wave you want. You know, it's very, it's very cool to get that type of... Um, of, of wonderful uh, goodwill, you know, from the modern crew. And I, yes, they're making millions of dollars and I'm stoked. I am so stoked for them that they, that, you know, we paved the way and, and now they're, they're reaping the rewards and it's brilliant to see. Your road to redemption is paved with tombstones. No quarter, kill all masters. Go to no quarter, killallmasters.com. Read it or.